asked to break side for the first time. The pioneering efforts of the people before us are worth remembering. Today we'll journey back in time, take a deep breath, and enter the past. The blue skies are dotted with marshmallow puffs of steam. The whistle blows in the distance. The ground trembles beneath our feet. Knowing the struggles of previous generations gives me a better perspective of modern life's tasks. Traverse with me in time to visit Eagle's Blasting Shop, the Christian Church, and Watson's Drive-Aids. Our route takes us southwest of Marshalltown to Haver Hill, our first stop, Eagle's Blasting Shop. Matthew Eagle, Eagle settled in Haver Hill in 1883, after immigrating to the United States at the age of 12. He was a machinist, a blacksmith, a wagon maker, a farrier, and an inventor. I would have a difficult time trying to explain to him how I found his life's history on the internet, on a web page, on a place called MarshallNet. His most important Word was in that of barrier. Barrier is a Latin word which means iron. It also means he shot horses. Time was a very big constraint for people 100 years ago, and so he would make up all the horseshoes for his customers in advance. So when he came to his shop, all he would have to do was heat up the metal and form it to the horse's hook. This is a shop environment as it was in 1940 when Mr. Eagle discontinued the blacksmith's shop. It's on the National Registry and is owned by the state of Iowa. The Marshall County Historical Society cares, takes care of the shop. Our next stop is Melbourne. Melbourne had the distinction of being the only town in Marshall County that had two major rail, ride, rail lines going through it, the Milwaukee and the Chicago. Today, the only remembrance of that is the mouse hole that's on the east side of the town. In 1888, the railroad donated some land for the first church to be built. This was often the case, the railroad needed places to stop frequently to refuel with water and coal. This is the first Christian church as it looked in about 1940. And by 1964, the church was disbanded and left abandoned for until 1982. Then a young couple built or bought the church the first order of business was to be married, and they were married in the church. For the next 12 years, they spent their spare time remodeling the church to what it is today. He was an excellent carpenter and had a great vision for our architecture and style. As you can see, these are the original arches in the church, and he repeated that design throughout the house. We bought the church three years ago, and it's amazing to us that the wood floors, even though they're 110 years old, do not sweep and make sound when you walk over them. And our last stop is Watson's Dry Goods in the State Center. Watson's Dry Goods was established in 1895 by the Watson family. They have been handed down throughout the generations. A few years ago, the last Watson decided to sell and retire. The people of State Center, knowing the importance of preserving such an original site, banded together, and when the store was put up for auction, they decided that they would buy all the fixtures and all the artifacts and preserve it for future generations. This is Watson's dry goods as it looks today. The community had to buy every piece 
the doorknobs, the storefront, the tin ceiling in the building, everything. That's how most of the auctions go. Everyone tries to get the most money, so they sell them in new details. The community is still receiving donations for any artifact that is within this period. And the volunteers of the community that staff the store are usually dressed in period clothing and are very willing to answer any and all questions that you may have about the store. As we can see, life was much different here 100 years ago, beginning with our mode of transportation. Yet through the efforts of dedicated people, we can still view the past. Quote, what is recovered, what is preserved, will largely determine for all time the knowledge available to subsequent generations of Americans concerning our heritage from the past. The next generation cannot study or preserve what has already been destroyed, unquote, by Robert J. Shearer and Wendy Ashmore, Archaeology, Discovering Our Past. Today our route consists of mounds of dirt covered by underdrug, brush, and overgrown weeds. Take a deep breath and hear the train's whistle.